These numbers, military suicides are down, but still high. The quick takeaway from the latest federal report on military suicides from the Department of Veterans Affairs in 2022 says 17 suicides a day down from 22. Tonight, a rare glimpse of the inside of the last stop troops make before they are laid to rest and what it's like for one veteran who started seeing friends show up at the morgue. In my job, I've seen, you know, multiple suicides come through here. An antiseptic smell permeates this medical exam room. Razor blade steel is everywhere. The cold, stark setting marks the last stop before a final goodbye. I take pride in the fact that I get to honor those veterans one more time by making sure that they get the honor before they're put to rest permanently. Working inside this morgue is a gatekeeper, an old soldier unexpectedly thrust on the front lines of the modern military suicide fight. How, how many have you seen in this job, suicides? Uh, soldier suicides that I know were soldiers, probably three dozen at least in the five years that I've been here. Uh, that's just the ones that I know about. Um, and I would say five of those are soldiers that I knew and served with. Chris Thomas runs the administrative arm of the Knox County Forensic Center and recalls the first time seeing fellow troops appear on the autopsy table. I mean, I had not seen this individual in 15 years, uh, but I recognized him the second I saw him. And it was uh, here. And it was here. The revelation deepened his connection to a crisis among men he served alongside for almost a decade. I joined the Tennessee Army National Guard the day I turned 18. In 2004, I was deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom 3 with the Tennessee Army National Guard. It's amazing to think that it's really been 20 years and to think of all the personnel that have changed since then and what a close-knit group I still am with some of the soldiers that we served with. War, by its nature, carries the risk and reality of death and overseas deployments for the Tennessee National Guard's 278th Armored Cavalry Regiment took a toll on the ranks. A um, friend of mine, uh, Paul Thomas III, was killed uh, by an improvised explosive device. In total, uh, 278th, we lost 10 soldiers that year and a half that we were there. Five of them were on and near the base that I was at. Yeah. I'd like to say hi to my wife, my daughter, I love you both, my mission and say hello to my family. Chris recalls Specialist Tucker died just two weeks before heading home, another reminder of the randomness and cruel reality of battle. So it was a, it was a very difficult time. I know a lot of people dealt with a lot of stress. Of You never knew who was trying to kill you and who wasn't. Once his service ended almost two decades ago, civilian life took over. Military friendships faded. It, you get a lot of remorse and, and survivor's guilt, and there's a lot of survivor's guilt um, from soldiers in Iraq, too, for those that didn't make it home. And Every time another soldier takes their life, you keep thinking, why, you know, where did I miss this gap? Uh, and then, in his new job, Chris began to bear witness to the military suicide crisis firsthand. Men he served with years ago now taking their own lives. I've seen too many funerals that I've been to of soldiers that have either died from drug-related deaths, from overdosing, or have taken their own life with a firearm in themselves. That reality is spurring this veteran soldier to act. His campaign is simple, and it's personal. One thing that soldiers really struggle with is that no, they can't talk to other people about what they're going through. It's something they can only talk to each other about, and they only feel comfortable talking to other soldiers. What do you want to say to soldiers right now who may be struggling. So you're not alone. There is a large group of soldiers and the problem is that they're all feeling these same things and they're just being quiet about them. They're not, uh, they're keeping it inside until it gets to the point it's too much. Find other soldiers to talk to. Find me, call me, uh, call anybody. Um, it, it, you're not saving anyone from a burden by taking your own life and removing yourself from the picture. Reach out, reconnect repeat.
It's his new mantra. It's the only way he knows to stop more old friends and fellow veterans from showing up at the forensic center after an abrupt and unfitting end to their lives. And I want to say goodbye to them in their old age when I'm in my old age. That would be my preference. If you or someone you know is struggling, you can dial 988 and press 1. You can also text this number, 838-255.